What is going on, everyone? Tim from Tearfawn Orbital. I'd like to talk about your creepy uncle today. Okay, so, creepy uncle, Dennis Lukanoff recently came out with a V version 4, I think it's the version 4, of his creepy uncle. Uh, this is provided or supplied here in the States by, I believe, Saber Bay. Uh, KR Sabres over in the UK also provides a version of this hilt. This particular one came uh, to me by the customer from Saber Bay. So I went about designing a new chassis for this particular hilt. Um, I was excited to revisit this hilt. Uh, I was also um, very grateful to the customer uh, for allowing me to spread my wings a little bit and make a few uh, accommodations for this particular install, right? And I'd like to talk about that, obviously, when we talk about the chassis, right? So uh, doing Luke Luke's hilt, Luke's version of this hilt and Obi-Wan's version of this hilt, when you've got a control box that are, is this low, <clears throat> it presents a few challenges, right? So you've got switches that are low, obviously, that you've got to wire up, and you've got LEDs. You've got arrows here that are low that you have to wire up. And that presents some challenges, right? Because you've got to, you've, you've got two options. You've got to do an either uh, static internal chassis that you can just wire those things up, or you do a removable chassis with like a pin system, um, or, or something like that, right? So with this particular install, I did a static chassis with a removable battery, right? Uh, simply put. So I do wanna come into Fusion and talk a little bit about that. I'll talk a little bit about what I did. And we will obviously, we'll do the whole thing, right? We'll come up top, talk about how to use it, and then we will do a demo, right? So let's come into Fusion. Okay, so here it is, a very unique, very weird looking chassis system uh, that I have done for this install. So let's start at the bottom, okay? Yes, this is an 18350 build. I hear you. I hear what the haters are saying already. God, man, why are you using 18350s all the time, Tim? 18350s, they just don't last as long. Look, they don't last as long, but they do last quite a while, um, believe it or not, right? So. I don't think that 18350s get enough love. Um, you know, we're not talking about, for, for this particular hilt, uh, we're not talking about a hilt that's being carried around at a con, right? Um, if it was, obviously, you know, I spoke to the customer about this. The customer was fine uh, with doing an 18350. Um, listen, folks, it's not hard to swap out a battery. Um, you know, this, the customer is aware that it's easy to, to take out a battery and put in a fresh one. Uh, I will be providing uh, the customer with a couple of 18350s with this install as well. So before we even went forward with this particular design, you know, I, I made sure to ask the customer, you know, I, you know, are you cool with going with an 18350 and they were fine with it, right? So that's, that's the thing, right? That the... Obviously, the caveat with going with a shorter battery is runtime, but with me, right, if it's a removable chassis, even if it's an unthreadable grip chassis or an unthreadable grip lightsaber, you're, swapping out a battery is not a problem for me personally, right? So um, 18350 is fine in my opinion. So this is a removable battery chassis, okay? So you unthread the lower grip, you take out this chassis, it is essentially killing the, it's the kill switch, okay? Initially, what I wanted to do uh, was have like a pin system, not a pin system, but I, I had these like forks here to kind of help secure the chassis in place. <laughs> My first test run or test print of this, I, I just wasn't really happy with how this was securing, and I'll talk about that when we come up top. Because of how the hilt is designed, um, I just didn't want to go this route. And it was actually a strange design cue uh, that I noticed about this. But yeah, I, di I didn't end up going with that. I did remove those, those pins or those posts. Okay, so this is just a free-floating removable. Um, and there is a specific way that you have to put this into the hilt, and we'll talk about that, obviously. Okay, so. Battery chassis, 28 millimeter speaker at the bottom here. 
This is from KR Sabres, okay? The upper part of the chassis is here. So this is a tilted profi board chassis. The, profi, the USB port and the SD card kind of peek out just underneath the midsection of the hilt and they're easily accessible uh, that way, right? I do like doing a tilted profi board. I've talked about that at length, probably ad nauseum. Uh, and, and that's it, right? So the upper section is just a bunch of big, chunky, greebly work. Around back, I did have, a, you know, there's plenty of room for stuff up here, right? Um, I chose not to go with a profi board up here because I just felt as though sticking a profi board up here would just look weird. It would look out of place. It would take you, quote, out of universe, <laughs> even though even though it already kind of looks out of universe. Uh, so I just wanted to put something extra up here. I mean, there's, there's plenty of room for a crystal chamber up here. Um, you know, I might do a design where there's a crystal chamber up here. Maybe I'll do like a Tierfon hybrid chassis with a crystal chamber. Who knows? So I stuck an OLED up here, right? Up top, there is just a blade side three rail PCB. That is what makes a connection to the upper part of the hilt, right? And that's it. This was an interesting one. A lot of moving parts in this one, as there usually are with hilts like this, right? So let's come up top. Okay, so here it is, the creepy uncle from Dennis Lukinoff. I have not added the tri-ring on this one uh, to the customer. Uh, that will obviously be in the box. I did add a piece of captain tape underneath this clamp card. Uh, it was very, very free floating. Uh, so I wanted to add a little bit of resistance so it didn't just kind of drop out of there, right? Uh, just like some, uh, strange things that were with this control box and I'm probably just kind of ignorant to whatever they were. Like I, you know, a lot of times with like with these hilts, there's just like no instruction manuals, obviously there's no documentation. Um, there were some uh, fiber, white fiber or white plastic uh, screws that were in this control box. I'm not sure what they were meant for. Um, obviously you can't tighten them from below because this is installed. I'm assuming they were there uh, to help uh, keep this clamp card in place. If this was used as a, as a static prop, maybe, I don't know. Um, but uh, I put some captain tape underneath this to kind of keep help it, help it in place. It's not taped in place. It's just kind of help. It's there to help keep some resistance there. Okay. Um, arrows are, are kind of just press it in place. And that's it, right? So let's talk about how to use this guy. So going to remove the pommel here so that that strange design aspect of this hilt that I was talking about right so I did put those like indentations in here because I wanted to kind of help my intention was to like put those there to help keep that chassis secured but the internal diameter of this part of the hilt there is a ring here that is a thinner diameter than the inside of this area, right? So it's it's thinner here than it is in here, if that makes sense. Very, very strange. I'm not sure why that was done. There goes the blade plug. I'm not sure why that was done. So there is a there's a ring here that is thinner than it, than it is in here. Um, so that can cause issues, especially if you're putting in the chassis and it is not aligned perfectly with these PCB pins that can cause shorts. So yeah, I'm really not sure why this was not one continuous internal diameter all of the way down to the pommel. Um, but hey, it is what it is, right? So that is why when using this hilt, you have to make sure you're putting this chassis, this battery holder, into the pommel first, right? So here's the battery holder. Spring side is your negative. I already have the battery in here, obviously. Um, to the customer, I will be including two of these 18350s. These are flat top protected 18350 batteries. So you put your battery in the battery tray, okay? Uh, put it in the pommel first. It is a little bit of a tight fit, okay? You put it in the pommel. And then you just kind of thread your pommel into the hilt. You are the chosen one! And that will power up your hilt, essentially, right? 
Blade plug did ship with the hilt. Very nice looking blade plug. Okay, so let's come down to the bottom. It's a good looking hilt. It is. I am, um, like full disclosure, I'm not a fan of the... I love how I use this time to like, instead of talking about the customer's hilt, I use it to talk about my personal opinions. Uh, not a fan of the uh, sequel trilogy, not a fan of this particular version of the hilt, but this is a, it's a nice, it's a nice hilt. It's a nice, well-made, well-made hilt. We don't care about your opinion, Tim, which you shouldn't. Um, so let's put a blade in it. Very interesting way of hiding the set screw here, but let's put a blade in it. Okay, so one inch blade, blade holder. Very handy, dandy way of hiding the uh, set screw here, right? So there is a ring. It's not this, not to that, not this top ring. This lower, thicker ring threads down. I have greased this up. This was almost frozen uh, when I received it. I was very scared that this was thread locked. Um, but this kind of unthreads, and the set screw is right there. Okay, so you want to unthread that. Rest your blade on those PCB pins and then tighten that set screw. You're ready to go and then you can re-thread that, that ring. And then you're ready to go. See what else we put on here? That's a font with no font file. The NASA team is ready for launch. Three, two, one. Okay. So that is it. That is the creepy uncle from Dennis Lukinoff. Solid hilt, really well made hilt, as uh, they usually are from Dennis. Uh, so this one was a lot of fun to uh, you know do something different with, right? And I am appreciative of the customer uh, for for letting me kind of spread my wings with this chassis design, right? So anyhow, to the customer. Thank you for trusting me with your hilt. If anyone has any questions about this particular install or anything really, please do not be a stranger. And with that being said, may the force be with you always. Have a good one, everybody.